same colour and you know they belong together, but there's a bit of trial and error in, in getting them to, to, to make the picture. Uh, the, the True History of the Mudman, the book that Raymond Blythe, my character, has written, um, came to me very late in, in the game. I, I had its title and I knew that it was going to be uh, fundamental to the, the story and the, the outcome of my novel. And I also knew it had to be a book that Edie, my character, says turned her into a reader. And of course I have books like that from my own childhood. Uh, the Enid Blyton's The Enchanted Wood was the book for me. Uh, but I wanted even more than that for it to be a story a bit like Peter Pan where generations of children have grown up reading it and pantomimes are put on and it, it goes on to be more than a book and become part of um, the cultural fabric. Uh, I, I, I do like to write about um, all, all different sorts of characters, but yes, elderly characters are, are very important to me. Uh, I grew up in a place in Australia called Tambourine Mountain, which is a very small community up in the mountains. And uh, I think, as is the way in many small communities, people of different ages uh, socialised together. So I knew a lot of uh, people who are much older than, than I was when I was growing up, and I was very good friends with them. Uh, one in particular, uh, an elderly gentleman who was uh, in his 70s when I met him when I was 10, became a very good friend of mine. He was a, a drama teacher. I took drama lessons from him. And he'd been a, a director and writer for the BBC in Wales. But he was fascinating and we were such great friends that it taught me very early on that um, old people are still uh, 18 years old on the inside, you know, that, that there's a lot more. I think in our society they can become invisible to some people, but for me they're a wealth of uh, stories and information and wisdom. <laughs> um, the structure of, of the book is very important to me. I actually get a lot of pleasure out of putting the pieces of puzzle together. And I, I, I read, grew up reading mystery stories and, and uh, crime stories, but mystery in particular. And I still think of my books as, as mysteries. And I think uh, when you're trying to um, make a reader think one thing when actually you're going to do something else, y you do need to put some planning into it. And I have many times when I think I'm going in the right direction and uh, and it doesn't work and I need to find another piece of the puzzle. And, and it is very much like that. It's like assembling a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle without the picture to tell you what it should look like. They're all the same colour and you know they belong together, but there's a bit of trial and error in, in getting them to, to, to make the picture. I am a pathological reader. <laughs> I uh, started reading very young and I didn't stop because it, it just gave me such pleasure. And I read very eclectically. Uh, I read a lot of non-fiction these days um, for research but also for interest about people and places and, and very varied topics. But I, of course fiction is my, my great love. Um, I love old books, uh, Victorian stories, uh, Daphne du Maurier. I read contemporary fiction. I love Ian McEwan. Uh, I, Barbara Vine, who is the uh, nom de plume of Ruth Rendell, writes wonderful, wonderful books that really inspired me when I was starting out as a writer because she also uh, enjoys the same themes, you know, the past and the present and secrets and small misunderstandings that have uh, dramatic outcomes.